Hello, so today we're going to start this Mondrian painting. We talked about the artist Pete Mondrian, his use of vertical and horizontal lines. Vertical lines go up and down, horizontal lines go side to side. And then he also uh, limited his color palette, limited the colors that he used to only the primary colors. So that means he didn't use every single color on his paint palette. He chose to limit it to just the three primaries. And so today we are going to create a painting similar to Pete Mondrian's. You're going to start with a small white piece of paper. First thing you need to do is write your name and the day you have art. Day A, day B, day C. You're going to flip it over and then you're going to use a ruler to draw vertical and horizontal lines on your paper. So you're going to set the ruler down the hand that you don't hold your pencil with. So I'm right-handed, I hold my pencil with my right hand and use my left hand. You want to stretch your pointer finger and your thumb apart from each other and then push down. And it might be easier for you to stand up, push your seat in and stand behind it to hold your ruler still because you don't want to start to draw your line and then your ruler move. So hold your ruler very firm by spreading out your pointer finger and your thumb and then you're going to draw a line. I like to draw my lines vertical, but remember, we need vertical and horizontal. So sometimes it's nice if you turn, it might be easier for you to turn your paper. And your lines do not have to go from the top to the bottom or all the way across your paper. You could start at the edge of your paper and stop when you run into another line. So I would like you to draw three lines going vertical and two lines going horizontal, or three lines going horizontal and two lines going vertical. And your lines can go across from one another. So I have two lines going up and down and two lines going horizontal, so I need one more line added somewhere. And I think I'm going to add it down here. And that should be enough if you really um, think that you should add a line, um, one more or two more lines, you can come and talk to me and we'll look at your paper and look at the composition and the arrangement of your lines and decide together. So after you have your lines drawn with your pencil and your ruler, you're going to set your ruler aside. Now I want you to use your ruler. So make sure your lines are straight. If you have a wavy or bumpy or curved line, you're going to need to erase your mistake and start over. The ruler is a tool to help you to draw a straight line, so I expect you to use it, and I expect your lines to be straight. So now you're ready to paint your lines black. So you're going to get a manila paper to go under your work. And you are going to get a paint, an egg tray with black paint in it. I'm going to give you a small paintbrush so that you can make your lines skinny, and you're just going to dip the tip of your paintbrush into the paint. So if I hold it up here, I want you to see how the paint only goes halfway up the bristles. It doesn't go all the way up to touch the metal. So try to only dip the bristle, the hairy part of your paintbrush, halfway up with paint. You're going to keep your paintbrush up and your wrist up. And you're going to try to not push down hard on your paintbrush. If you push down hard on your paintbrush, you get a wider line. And if you keep it up on its tiptoes, you get a skinnier line. Now you're going to have, since this is a small paintbrush, it holds a small amount of paint. So you're going to have to re-dip and re-dip and re-dip halfway up the paintbrush because you're going to run out of paint quite frequently. So I can go back over these lighter areas with my paint, make it a little bit darker maybe. And just as neatly as possible, paint right on top of your pencil lines. You might also find it's easier for you to turn your paper and paint your lines up and down as opposed to side to side, or you might find that it's easier to paint side to side as opposed to up and down. So feel free to turn your paper as you're painting. So once all of your lines are painted, you are going to put your painting on the drying rack, put the manila paper back over in the corner by the sink, and then you'll set your paintbrush in the sink and I'll come around and get your paint trays from your table. On the second day, you're ready to paint your primary colors. So you're gonna need a paint tray with the primary colors. You're gonna need a water basin. And you're going to need a sponge. 
Now the sponge should stay the sponge side up, the scrubby side with the printed um, colored side should stay down and keep your sponge side up. So th this time I'm gonna give you a larger paintbrush. You're going to need to have a dry paintbrush, so don't put your paintbrush in the water like I did because then you have to dry it off on the sponge. And you're gonna start with yellow, the lightest color first. So what I want you to do today, when you paint your primary colors, I want you to paint five boxes with the three primary colors. Five boxes with the three primary colors. So what that means is, you're gonna paint two boxes the same color, you're gonna get a new color, paint two boxes that color, and then one color is just gonna be painted once. So I want you to start with yellow. You do not have to paint two boxes with yellow. You could just paint one box with yellow and then two boxes with red and two boxes with blue. But I want you to start with yellow. I want everyone to start with yellow because yellow is nice and clean. If um, you do red or blue and you don't get all the red or blue off your paintbrush and you dip it in the yellow, it's gonna mess the yellow up for your entire table and everybody who's sharing your paint and you don't wanna mess up your yellow paint for everybody at your table. It won't make them happy. So start with yellow first, pick a box, any box that you wanna paint. Paint it in nice and solid and try not to leave any white paper poking through. Okay, I'm gonna paint a second box with yellow, but you do not have to. So now I'm ready to change colors. I can't take this messy paintbrush and put it in a new color because then it'll mess up the new color. I need to clean the paintbrush off. So I'm gonna use the teeth at the bottom of the basin and run my bristles, the hairy part of my paintbrush, across those teeth. And those teeth will help clean my paintbrush off quicker than if I were just to swish it around like this. So now I think my paintbrush is clean. The way that I can test to make sure it's clean is when I pull it across the sponge to dry it off, because we're using temper paint, we want a dry paintbrush. I'm gonna pull it across the sponge to dry it off, and if I don't get any yellow on my sponge, then I know my paintbrush is clean. So now I'm gonna go dip into red or blue next, it doesn't matter. And remember last time when we painted our black lines, I asked you only to get paint halfway up the bristle part, or halfway up the eight, the hairy part, that's the same today. You shouldn't have paint all over the metal part of your paintbrush. I'm gonna paint one box red and then I'll paint two boxes blue and that will make my five boxes. So as you paint the primary colors, count your boxes and make sure you don't paint more than five. So now I'm gonna rinse my paintbrush off across the teeth, pull it across my sponge. Doesn't look like any red paint is coming out, so I know my paintbrush is clean. Now I just need to make sure it's dry by pulling it across. I'm not jamming it into the sponge and twisting it around. Pulling it across the sponge, that helps me keep this nice, neat point. If I push it down and twist it around, then this point becomes um, like a wet cat and all spiky. And you have brown paper or manila paper under your work so that you can paint the edges of your paper and not get paint on the table. So that's why I'm scooting my paper up a little bit because I'm gonna be painting the bottom edge of this. And I only wanna get paint on this manila paper and not on the table. All right, so how many boxes do I have painted? One, two, three, four. And I need to paint five boxes, so I need to find another spot where I wanna paint blue. Okay, so now I have all five boxes painted. I'm gonna take my paintbrush and put it in the water basin. I will come around and get water basins and paint trays and sponges. You are going to take your painted wet paper on top of the manila, both papers, and you're gonna put both papers on the drying rack just like this to dry. And then you have finished and completed your Mondrian styled primary color line painting. Good job.